Today, I'm going to show you how to easily make an iron farm, as easy as iron farms can be anyways. This is a big topic to tackle, so buckle up. That's right, we're tackling an iron farm today because this is the iron that we have. It, it looks like a lot spread out here. Th this is all it actually is. We want to get a lot more of it because iron farms serve a lot of awesome purposes. So a single iron farm in better condition gets between 380 and 420 iron per hour if it's using all the available spawn spots. We will be using all the available spawn spots, so our farm is going to fall within that range. Now, iron farms have a tendency to not be easy. More importantly, they have a tendency to break or not work initially, at least. And uh, largely, it's because of these guys, villagers. And not because they leave potatoes all over the ground, which we'll take care of later with the farm, trust me, but because the way villages are made, kept track of, and things like profession blocks and beds can be a big, big, big issue unless you know how to initially set them up right and troubleshoot them when problems occur. Why are you looking at me right now? I'm, I'm not talking to you. Bruh. Which even I can come across problems while making a farm that I have to troubleshoot. So I'm gonna help you out with that whole process beginning to end. We will hopefully avoid all problems and stay tuned throughout the video because I will tell you how to solve problems as they arise. So first of all, let's talk about location. Your iron farm can go anywhere, kind of. We need to be though about 100 blocks away from this area right here because I am going to be keeping villagers here in a slightly different fashion later on with some plans that I have, and we need to be at least 100 blocks away from any of these working villagers. And I've happened to have already scouted out an area that I'd like to use. We need to go in this direction. You're gonna see our Z coordinate, which is 470 right now. We will be at more than Z 570 when we go in this direction. Now, when I say you could put an iron farm anywhere, I mean, you can put it anywhere. If you wanna put it way up in the sky, that's fine. If you wanna put it way down underground, you wanna put it in a certain biome, all those things are fine. Put it wherever you want, as long as you keep it away from other villages and villagers, which we'll talk about that a little bit later. Also, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that while building, you keep away any other beds. Perfect. Did I hear something? I'm going in. As I was saying, you wanna make sure that you keep away any additional beds or profession blocks, and especially villagers more than anything, at least 96 blocks away from this while you're building it and until you get it functional. Again, there's gonna be a lot of little like nuances in this as we go. So you have to pay close attention as we go through to make sure that you don't miss any points because at some point you're gonna to wanna to go down to the comment section and tell me that the farm doesn't work. And I'm gonna tell you to watch the video back because I give you all the information you need in the video. So first things first, I've already plotted out in a creative test world exactly where on this island I'm putting this thing because we have big plans for this building that's going to stretch out over a lot of different episodes. This is a huge multi-episode project actually. Today we're doing an iron farm without a trading hall but in the next episode the trading hall is going to be added. So you want to watch both of those if you want to do the trading hall portion. After that episode, we'll go over villager discounting, enchanting, and finally, I have a huge plan for the building that goes around this thing. It's going to be awesome, and it's going to be steampunk themed. I've never done steampunk themed before. I got some cool plans for it. Hopefully it works out good, but you'll have to stick around for that. For now, let's get started with the iron farm. Okay, so here is the location on my little island here that I'm going to be building my platform. And that's where we're going to start is the platform. And we're going to start out by the small area that eventually is going to be the kill chamber i'm standing dead center right now so for now i'm going to go ahead i'm going to put out a little three by three platform this is where we are eventually going to leave the golems for them to die and just so we don't lose track of the center i'm just going to knock it out and i have a little hole right here that should be good enough for me to be able to find it and when it comes to this little three by three platform and our platform overall our beds have to be within a certain distance of this area so i think just to show you guys a better way to figure out where your platform is going to go it may be better to start with the beds those beds need to be within six blocks above or below our farm now most people do below and below is probably where you're going to want to put them at which point you could you could just put them literally right below this block right here in our case though we're going to go above just because of a design i'm going to have with this thing later on where it's going to matter for me and how this thing ultimately looks now our golems they need a height of one two three blocks to be able to scooch their little heads in here and burn up so that means above this third block is where we can put our beds and actually since we're doing above i think we're gonna go fourth block up we're gonna go fourth block up because i want to make sure i have plenty of room for the little lava killing system down below um you guys don't have to do that if you don't want to but this is the level right here 
that we're going to place our beds on top of. So I'm gonna place down a crafting table and I'm gonna go ahead and craft up some beds. Now for an iron farm to work, you need at least 20 beds. Now for my future purposes of what I'm gonna be doing with the trading hall next episode, I'm gonna actually end up needing, well, technically I'm gonna end up using 80 beds, but for now I'm only gonna worry about putting 40 of them down. Yeah, we're gonna have a big trading hall. Make sure you tune in to the next episode for that. But for now, let's get enough space for our 40 beds. So I have one ring around here. I'm gonna add in a second, a third, and then a fourth ring around. And now what I can do is I can run my bed around keeping the pillows as close to the center as I possibly can and that's actually an incredibly important part of this we're going to talk about here in just a second because where those pillows are is actually going to determine where it's possible for our golems to spawn okay so here we are we have in our case 40 beds if you're doing less than 40 beds, you won't have this outer ring around. But if you're wondering what 40 beds looks like, this is it right here. So in terms of golem spawning, I'm going to put this in a way that makes it easy for you. You don't have to know which way is north, south, east, west, all of that stuff. Okay. Golems will spawn within six blocks vertically of the pillow. So six up six down and we'll spawn within eight blocks horizontally of the pillow so eight that way eight that way eight that way and eight that way now technically they do this from the center of the village whichever one of these beds is counted as the center of the village so usually if you already had villagers here that would probably be the first bed you place down but a we don't have villagers here yet and B, sometimes, especially when updates happen or just weird things in Minecraft occur, the center bed likes to change. So we make sure we go out eight blocks from the furthest bed on each side. And I've already calculated out what that's gonna be in my case. So if you're doing 40 beds like me, what you're gonna wanna do is from your little center, three by three square, you're gonna wanna go out seven blocks in each direction first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that is not counting the center blocks right here. Now you'll want to go ahead and just fill in that whole area. And the reason we went seven blocks from that edge is because being eight blocks total to here means the water will come all the way to this location because water can flow a total of eight blocks. Now we're still not eight blocks from the outside of here. So we actually need to go up one and go out another two, three, and four. Now we're going to do this on all four sides and we're going to make a ring around this platform. Okay, so once you have eight across from the center, four across here, now we just wanna put a little lip or border around it. And that lip or border, it can be one block tall just like this. Just go ahead and border your farm. Okay, next thing I'm gonna want you to do, uh, we're gonna put a solid block right here, put a slab, a top half slab right there, and we can go ahead and get rid of this block. Now we can put a solid block on top of here like this, and we need to make ourselves some signs. These signs are what's actually going to hold up the lava for us, because we're gonna use lava as our killing mechanism into today's tutorial. Now, to do this, all you need to do is go ahead and place a sign on one side of this block. Place a sign on the other side of the block. And place a sign on the side of that, beside it, and on the side there. Do the same thing on the other side. Next, from the end right here, go out a sign, and then you're gonna have to like position yourself above, use a block maybe, and go up a sign like this. Now, we're just gonna wrap around this with signs. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and click one, two we're still in line there three and i'm gonna come over here i'm gonna go one two three four and then from the side of that one go one two three four side of that one one two three four and then that took you back to over here now, I need to go grab some lava, but I can show you with the water here. What will happen is if we put water right on top of here, you see how it gets stuck. It stays up there. That's going to be our killing mechanism for the iron golems. They will just flow into here and they'll die a horrible death by lava. I was on my way back over from getting to lava and I saw this like ruined nether portal from over there. So I just thought I'd come back by it. Look what we have here, everybody. An enchanted golden apple. Enchanted golden apples. We're not gonna go over them in detail right now, but they're awesome. They're probably the most rare item in all of Minecraft. They're a little bit easier to get nowadays because you can get them from the ancient cities, which are not fun to go to, but they give special properties when you eat them. Great for fighting the wither, which we'll probably use later on, but I thought it'd be fun to name our enchanted golden apple. So what's the name that you guys have? Comment section down below. What should we name our eventually going to be eaten enchanted golden apple? Or should I not eat it? And maybe we should save it. Let me know that down below too. Okay, lava 
is in. Next thing we need is two buckets of water. And what we need to do is we need to go to each corner. We need to build the corner out like this and like this. Do that for all four corners. This is going to help make sure that when you put down water, you don't create an infinite water source inside of your farm and have to empty the whole thing out manually because that is terrible. We've all done it. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually create some infinite water sources going across here. Now, this process can be a little bit of a pain in the butt just because of how water flow works. So if you want to make it super easy, what I would recommend that you do is each time you do a row, place a row of temporary blocks down just like this and it'll make putting down the water really easy what you'll see is i could put down a water bucket here and a water bucket here and this one in the middle has become an infinite water source it'll always come back and then this is also a water source i can skip this block and put a water source here and now all of this is an infinite water source except for the very end and i can very quickly and easily do something like this and take it all the way down just like that. And I'm gonna do this to all four sides. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave this here for now because it'll just make my life a little bit easier when placing the rest of the water down so I don't get pushed around all over the place. Okay, and next thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead in these little corners, place down water buckets in each one of those. And now once that's done, you are good to go ahead, remove these temporary blocks out the way and your platform itself, it's actually done, it's complete. It would be ready to spawn golems if we had all of the villagers in place ready to go. And that's what we're going to work on next. Okay, so I have a little place where my villagers are going to go. And you may notice it's way far away from the beds. There's no way this is going to work right here. I need to get rid of that bed because I don't want to break the farm. Anyways, we have a spot for villagers, but the beds are way up here. You can only be about four blocks vertically from the beds for villagers to detect them. But wait. I have a trick for you guys. And that trick is that as long as we have one villager up here within range of the beds, then a village is technically created and iron golems can spawn. And those other villagers, they'll be part of the village by default, which means we get iron golem spawns. So all we need is one villager to go up here close enough to these beds to detect them. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work myself right about here i think should be good we're gonna go up we're gonna make ourselves a little barrier that way the villager can't actually like connect to those beds and then i'm just gonna make them a little cage now we have to get a villager up here and it has to be a very specific type of villager too believe it or not it has to be a nitwit villager a nitwit villager is simply a villager that cannot take a profession we need a villager that can't take a profession because later when we make this thing into a trading hall that's going to make a big difference if we had a villager that can take professions here it would mess up our trading hall and and that would not be good so we'll put a nitwit here at some point and no the nitwit is not me for all of you guys wanting to make the joke <laughs> so now for the last so fun part we need to bring villagers over here but luckily we only need to bring two that's right only two i'll show you how this works let me go grab them if you're enjoying this episode of the guide make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel check out the whole bedrock guide series and consider picking up a channel membership to get server access and many other perks that we have available i appreciate all of you now let's get back to building the farm now me i happen to have villagers right here so we're going to go ahead we're going to snag a couple of them. I don't want my ones that I've already locked professions into because I don't want them to stay farmers ultimately. So I'm going to find some that don't have locked professions like this guy right here. And we're going to check out this guy. I think huh? he should huh? come here. Come here. Yes, he he's good. He's good. So let's kind of drive up here. Let's knock him in the boat. And now, boom, we got ourselves two villagers. What else are we going to need? Well, we would normally need lots of potatoes because we would want our two villagers that were taken over there to be able to breed. But these guys, they've been farming potatoes for a long time. They're full on potatoes. So that's not a problem for us. And since this is better condition, I can take a lead, toss it down, and I can just pull my villagers around with me. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to drag them over there, going up and around and all sorts of crazy stuff to get to where we need to be. So let's go. And actually, before I go, I'm going to do something to make this just a touch easier is we're going to bring ourselves a couple of profession blocks. We need profession blocks for all of our villagers anyways. And there's one profession block that if you're not going to be using this for trading, is going to be the best thing to use. Let me show you. That profession block is this right here. It's the fletching table. Four planks, two flint, will give us a Fletcher. And the reason we're picking the Fletcher is because A, his, his table's pretty cheap, but more importantly is the Fletcher will work whether it's raining outside or whether it's not raining outside, which means our iron farm will produce slightly more iron. It's not a huge difference, 
but it is a difference. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that because I'm not quite ready to figure out what all professions I want. And I don't have all the materials to make the ones that I want for the trading hall in the next episode. For now, I'm going to make myself 40 Fletcher's tables. You need to have a fletching table for each villager that you're going to have. So if you're only going to do 10 villagers, then you only need 10 fletching tables. Remember, 10 is the minimum needed to spawn golems. I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but the number of villagers that you select to have over here, it is important because 10 villagers is the minimum, but for every 10 villagers that you have, the farm can have an extra golem be alive at the time. So with 10 villagers, one golem can be alive, but while that golem is traveling down his little chute to get burned up, the game might want to try to spawn another golem. If you only have 10 villagers, that spawn will fail, making your farm go slower. It happens pretty often that two golems like to be spawned within a relative short time of each other. So 20 villagers is the minimum I suggest you go with, but 30 villagers is even better because that means three golems could be alive at a time and several times every hour, you will have moments where three golems are alive at once, so it does increase your rates. It is not worth going over 30 for the iron farm speed purposes, only for villager trading. So. Do with that what you will. Now, moving villagers for most people can be a real annoyance, but once you've got like a good method down on Bedrock Edition, at least of doing it, you're still gonna have your moments where you wanna smash your head against the wall. But for the most part, using boats, it's really not that bad. All right, and there we go. It was that easy. Now I'm gonna say that with an asterisk because I, oh, bringing this over, I thought of one problem. Now, most of you guys, you're probably gonna be bringing these villagers down to an area that's gonna be within like the, the normal like area of your beds. So you're not gonna have any problems. But me, I have these villagers here, but my beds are way up there. Oh, 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 I just, ah, ha, ha, ha. So hold on, I think I know, I think I know. So if I have one bed placed with them, how did they just, did they just make a baby? Why did, how did they do that? I placed the bed down a second ago to sleep, but the, all of the other beds, they're all the other beds are up here. They should not be able to see those beds. I guess the village has been established because I temporarily placed the bed down. So the center of it's gonna be up there now, which is fine. We placed the bed down, but as long as you don't leave it down while you're getting the farm like actually like functional, then it's not gonna be a problem. So these guys, they're they're running around a lot right now because they, they, they wanna get out. They wanna get to the beds. I'm gonna give them a couple profession blocks to see if that, oh, we can't do that yet because we need to block off these edges or they're gonna jump out. Okay, now, if I place some profession blocks down, it's weird, they won't, um, have, did I ever trade with them? No, he's not been traded with. Here, let me break these. I've, I've told you guys this before, villager mechanics are extremely weird. So for now, they're breeding. We're just gonna let them do their thing and they're gonna get us up to, in my case, 40 villagers. We'll deal with how to make sure that we have this thing as a village with the center point up there. We'll deal with that once we have all the villagers. Okay, I figured out the problem. Those villagers, since we moved them over from that village there, for whatever reason, they never forgot that they were in that village. They never disconnected from it. So when they got over here, they thought they were still in the village, so they started breeding up some babies. Now, when I logged off and logged back on, they were disconnected from that village. They changed professions because they saw the profession blocks here. I tried to make them see the beds up there by putting down a bed here, thinking that maybe that would work, but it does not work that way. So not a big deal. All you gotta do is get one of these guys here and take them up top to the little pod or adversely, I can bring the beds up there down, wait for them to breed all the way up to 40 and then take the beds back up there and place them back down. Not quite sure which way I'm gonna do it. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. As long as when you move the beds down here, you break all of them, every single bed and take them all back up top to place them it'll work out fine. The village will rebuild itself back up top. You won't have any issues. Okay, so we have ourselves now 40 villagers down here. We're not getting um, golems yet because these villagers don't have workstations. We'll go over that one more time here in just a moment because there's one last requirement you guys need to know about with the workstation. But I have myself a single nitwit here and we need to take him top side. So we put him in a chest boat. That way other villagers can't get in. Tie this to the chest boat and I should be able to drag him over here. Come on, buddy. See if we can pull him up and out. Oh, it's okay. He's a nitwit. He's fine. Now let's drag him over and let's see if we can pull him up without like just like slinging him like somewhere like off in the distance. I think we're good. I think we're good. I think he'll continue to come up with us. Oh, 
Um, let's do it this way. Hold on. I'm going to swing him out this way. Kind of plant him like over here. Nope. Didn't work. No. Okay. 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 He, he really just, he really wants to die. Um, we're going to do this the safer way. Uh, we'll make a stack of blocks here and we are going to come right about here and we'll pull her up. Oh, just, just don't die on me, buddy. Just don't die on me. That's all I ask. All right. So this will get him up high. Oh God. What is his pro? He's not, he might not make it. Okay, uh, we're gonna have to alter plan. This. Are you kidding me? Get on this side. This is why they call him a nitwit. Okay, all right, let's bring him over. There you go. He sees the beds. Okay. Oh, easy. Stop swinging so much. Oh, oh, easy. Oh, no, don't do that again. He's, he's not in good shape right now. Um, okay. Just need you up a little bit. God, this is, this is getting kind of scary. I am not going to lie. Okay. Come over here. There you go. Easy does it. <laughs> Easy does it. No! Seriously? I'm so upset. This is not why we use mine carts. I have to get another nitwit somehow. Are you freaking kidding me? Attempt number two. This way. We're going for a zero damage trip this time, buddy. Zero damage. Easy does it. Easy does it. Come on, buddy. I just want you to kind of... Nope. Stop bouncing so much. I said no damage, no death. A little bit further. Okay. No, no, no. Okay, that's good. Okay, now I want to trap you in this. Now I can do this. I can jump out. I can put a torch in here with you. And cover your head over. Now, just don't do something stupid to kill him, Prowl. Okay, beds have moved back topside. Our nitwit is trapped there. He detected the beds. And then all the other villagers tried linking to all of those beds. So we're good with that. So first thing I want to address, because everybody's going to comment this down below, is cats. So a lot of people think the cats spawning will mess up an iron farm. It does absolutely nothing to the iron farm. Cats do not affect rates at all. It was a thing that people wondered about and some people thought that they used to affect rates, but they do not. So if you don't want to do anything about the cat, oh, that's, those are spawnable blocks. I'm going to have to fix that. Um, that's okay. I just need to put some slabs on top. It'll be good to go. Um, anyways, so these guys spawning in, they don't hurt anything. It's fine if they spawn in. You can kill them. You can not kill them. It, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect anything at all. So now our next step, and this is the step that's going to get us golems actually spawning, although their iron bits are just going to drop down in here. We just need villagers to work. So remember earlier, we're using Fletchers because Fletchers do not stop working during like rainstorms and stuff like that. So it means slightly more iron production especially if you're going to afk in the area and the blocks are cheap to make but we need 75 percent of our villagers to have worked like actually like worked at their station for the farm to actually kick on and start working so we have 38 more professional blocks here and i'm just going to place them in such a fashion that the villagers can get to them and can't like hop up on top of them and like get out or something um, this is going to be a little painful, so ba bear with me. It's just because I'm in a tight area. I probably should have put these down first. First iron incoming. Here it comes. Oh, yeah. We don't have a collection system yet, but people, we have iron. You see that started right away because we met all of the conditions that we talked about throughout this episode. Villagers can work. There's a villager within range of the beds up there. The platform is like within the proper range. Iron golems started spawning right away. When we look at this, let's take a look. Let's take a look. There's nothing more beautiful 
than having iron golems constantly spawning in and there we go right there look at it this is how it works they just spawn in they get pushed in see look we have two at a time showing you that having 20 villagers is better than 10 because that second golem would have failed to spawn all right well now that we have this thing working we need to get some hoppers and chests all right so now we need a collection system and i personally i want to kill the cats to get string from them so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pillar up here We'll kind of just like scooch over and I think I mentioned this earlier. This is not going to be my end design. So I am going to end up ripping this out within like maybe three or four episodes from now. So this is going to be very temporary. But this shows you exactly what you need to do. First of all, you can put a campfire right here just like that. The cats will actually burn up on it and they'll die. OK, and then they'll drop the string. And then luckily, if we put a hopper right here, that hopper, it can snag through the campfire all of the iron the poppies and the string and then all we're going to want to do is we're going to come out one like this we're going to put a double chest right here and a double chest right here and that's going to be able to get us two double chest full of items i may come back over and like add more in but i just don't have more chests with me right now we're going to face a hopper here and face a hopper here now any cats that spawn and drop or any uh, golems that spawn and drop they're going to put their drops in here and everything's going to end up in that chest right there so we now have storage now the final thing i have for you guys is to talk about a few troubleshooting steps for you in case for some reason your iron farm doesn't work initially or stops working now while making your farm if you're having some issues here's a few things to keep note of first of all after you make the farm give it upwards of about 20 minutes after the last villager has grown into an adult and all the profession blocks have been placed to make sure that iron golems are spawning sometimes they won't spawn right away and largely that's because the villagers have to work first um, so just don't freak out if they don't start spawning immediately also if you're not seeing golem spawning you're a little worried unload the chunks like go a couple hundred blocks away and come back and maybe even log off and log back into your world that may sort of reset the village and allow it to start spawning golems at that point i have seen this help in certain situations and then also while you're at it wait a full day night cycle like wait for the day to go through you can sleep through the night part that's fine but just give it a full cycle to come back around and see if the golems start spawning and see if that also can fix your problem or if the the farm's just for whatever reason not cooperating and not starting up right away and just a couple things to double check to make sure that you didn't make a mistake make sure you have the right number of profession blocks for villagers and it all can be reached by the villagers uh, make sure you don't have more villagers than beds for whatever reason if you have more villagers than beds golems will not spawn make sure that the villagers beside the beds is a nitwit and that he is still there and alive make sure you put a torch in there so zombies can't spawn in on him and kill him and make sure that you don't have any profession blocks or beds outside of what is needed for the farm within about 100 blocks or so it usually doesn't matter like that bed over there won't break anything unless for some reason a villager connects to it at which point that could become the center bed and make golems spawn out here if you see golems spawning outside of the normal spawnable area that's because you've done something wrong you, you didn't make the platform the right size or you don't have a bed in the right position if you've done all the above and you're still having issues go through break all of the beds break all the profession blocks wait about 20 minutes log off the world log back one just to make sure that the village data that was there gets completely deleted then go back through add all of the beds first add all the profession blocks second the villagers are fine just leave them as they are and the farm should start up and here we are the iron is rolling in it feels great we have a working iron farm thanks for watching click the like button subscribe to the channel and i'll see you next time